a Tesla's battery explodes in somebody's kitchen. And it's kind of a wild story. I've got so many questions. This incident happened in Cary, North Carolina, January 2024, and it involves a 12-volt battery for a Tesla. Now, this isn't any regular 12-volt battery. A lot of Tesla's vehicles have moved to a lithium-ion 12-volt battery, and the design is a little bit different. I know, I know. It's a 16-volt battery, not a 12-volt battery. The lithium-ion batteries, the way they're constructed, it just happens to bump that up to 16 volts. It's still a low-voltage system. As you can see, this battery doesn't have traditional battery terminals. It's more of a plug-style connector, which raises a lot of questions on this incident and how it actually happened. If you're not familiar, an electric vehicle has both a low-voltage system and a high-voltage system. And the owner of this vehicle was having a problem with the low-voltage battery, a lithium-ion battery. He didn't actually want to tow the vehicle to a Tesla service center in order to get the vehicle fixed. And for a Tesla, whole repair options are somewhat limited. To give you some background on the way these batteries are designed, you actually have multiple prismatic battery cells inside this hard metal case. But you also have a battery management system with relays. These relays should disconnect the battery if they see loads either coming from the battery or coming externally into the battery that are inappropriate. It should be able to completely disconnect itself from the outside world. The owner of this vehicle actually disconnected the 12 volt battery and brought it in his house to charge it. Now, this is what's really baffling because I don't really understand how he was able to charge this battery or how he was able to hook this battery up to a charger. Because when you look, when you disconnect the plug on this battery, there aren't traditional battery terminals. It's very difficult, if not impossible, to get something in there in order to connect a charger to this battery. This is not the way to charge this battery. When you look at the manual for this vehicle, you're actually supposed to connect the charger to these spots inside the vehicle. You've got a small red rubber cap that you can take off, connect your positive to, and you've got another area where you can connect your negative to. Now what's interesting is inside the manual, it says only to turn on the charger for 20 seconds and then to turn it off. I suspect that statement is there so you don't actually damage the battery. Lithium ion batteries, they cannot be charged the same way you charge a lead acid battery. Using that type of charger can easily damage the system and easily cause thermal runaway. Now in a perfect world, the battery management system, if it detects that the battery is being charged improperly, will disconnect the terminals in that plug and stop that from happening. But these are engineered systems that don't always work. Obviously, this person was already having a problem with their battery. That's why they had to bring it in the house to try to charge it. While that battery was charging, there was an explosion. And when you talk to normal people, non-firefighters, that can mean a wide variety of events. For somebody in the fire service, what happened probably really wasn't an explosion. And it definitely wasn't thermal runaway. It did damage some items in the house. It left some burn marks on this stool. And it also damaged and left some very large scorch marks in this chest. While I don't think these batteries went into full thermal runaway, there was some type of thermal event. You can tell by the burn marks in the chest. That was a fairly decent fire of some type. I've seen one of these batteries go into full thermal runaway, and it shut a jet flame out about six feet long. This blowtorch effect that looked pretty cool. Not so cool if it's in your house. The homeowner was extremely fortunate. During the commotion, a neighbor heard what was going on, brought over a fire extinguisher, and put out the fire. When the fire crews arrived, all that was left in that home was smoke. And realize, this is toxic smoke. Realistically, all smoke is toxic. But lithium-ion batteries give off some extra special gases that just aren't good for you. This is an important lesson for everyone. Have working fire extinguishers in your home. Keep them in a place that's accessible that you can easily grab them, know where they're at in the case of an emergency. Don't keep them under your kitchen sink. That's the last place you want to keep it. Keep one near the front door, near the back door, anywhere you have an exit. That way, if you know that there's a fire, you can grab the extinguisher and have an exit to your back while you're trying to fight that fire if you make that decision. I did reach out to the owner to try to get additional information. How did they try to charge that battery? I wanted that battery itself to do some failure mode analysis on it, try to figure out exactly what happened, but unfortunately didn't hear back from them. Now, because the owner was having issues with this battery, I suspect it was at a low state of charge. And because that battery is at a low state of charge, 
That's the difference between a small thermal event and a very large thermal event if that battery were to fail. To learn more about the state of charge and why the state of charge is important when it comes to thermal runaway, click this link right here.